Welcome to Behind the Lines, a podcast brought to you by In Play Live. This is a sports betting podcast like no other. We are not here to give you our best picks, our favorite parlays, or our over-under predictions for this weekend. We are not here to peer into a crystal ball and predict the future. What we are here to do is to educate and inform sports bettors about the practices the sports books try to deploy, their strategies, the way they try to turn customers into long-term losers. By exposing their tactics and offering tips and counter tactics, we aim to help sports bettors navigate this battlefield and avoid the traps and pitfalls created by the sports books. I'm your host, Shane Mercer. I'm a career journalist with a background in hard news, but I have a big time passion for sports and I consider myself a sports betting hobbyist. <laughs> I'm excited now to introduce, though, Andrew Pace, the founder of In Play Live. He is a professional sports better, and In Play Live is probably one of the most sophisticated sports betting communities in the world. Andrew, how are you, man? Never been better, boss. I got to say that intro was incredible, and I don't know if I'm capable of getting through such a you know, string of words without the oohs, ahs, and ums with the professional background that you have and how cleanly you do it. But uh, yeah, super excited to be here, Shane, and uh, really excited for the future of the show. Yeah, no, we're really excited. And I'm really hoping that over time, our audience will be able to become better betters by recognizing when the books are trying to fool them. And I mean, the books never stop. They're always trying to fool us, you, the viewer, the audience. They are, you know, it's it's never ending and they're always looking for ways to take your money. And if you're listening to us and you're watching this, then chances are you are already a sports better and you know how much money they've taken from you. <laughs> so <laughs> we are here to try to help you lose less and hopefully win more. And again, not by peering into a crystal ball or trying to predict the future, but simply by recognizing when they are trying to dupe you. Um, so with that, uh, I think we should dive into our very first topic here on episode one. And, you know, I, I would describe this as the elephant in every single room. And it, it really is wherever you go these days, we are bombarded by advertising by the sports books. This has to do with, you know, uh, the opening up of markets and loosening of restrictions and regulations right across North America, both in Canada and the U.S. And so with that, we are now seeing sports advertising in a way I don't think we've ever seen before. It's literally everywhere you go. You can't avoid it. Um, it's it's on the broadcast, whatever game you're watching. Even if you're not watching a game, you're getting bombarded with sports ads. You could be watching, you know, your favorite drama or something. And, you know, you're getting hit with sports ads. I was on the TTC in Toronto the other day. I couldn't go anywhere without being surrounded by points bet. Points bet here, points bet there, everywhere you go. And it's it's just, it's a constant bombardment of ads so so with that you know andrew tell me a little bit about what you're seeing well speaking of points bet they're trying to work with us right now <laughs> so we have some we have some pretty cool stories that hopefully we'll be able to get into over the course of of the episodes uh you know relating to how it all works behind the scenes that a lot of i guess people at the individual betting level don't necessarily understand and i'm a big believer that information is power so if you start to really understand how the actual businesses work behind the scenes or behind the line, shall we say, uh, you know, that really presents opportunity from an understanding, you know, uh, of, as a better and understanding of what's going on, which in my opinion leads to more informed and smart decisions. But I mean, <clears throat> as far as what I'm seeing, I think, I think it's what everyone's seeing. And, and ultimately that is, you know, like you said, bombardment of ads, but I think more than anything, what's happening out there right now is it's kind of this gold rush in 2018 sports betting was legalized in New Jersey. And then obviously we're sitting here in 2023 where 35 of the 52 states have now been legalized. That doesn't mean you can't actually place live wagers in all of those states, but you can actually in some capacity, whether that's actually going to 
you know, some sort of local government uh, facility and placing a physical wager pregame where you get, you know, the old school classic Las Vegas betting slip. 35 states, it's now legalized where in some capacity you can actually place place a wager. And then, of course, in Canada on April 4th, um, Ontario became legalized and uh, single game wagering became legalized across Canada as well. Um, and Ontario being the first province to kind of, uh, you know, push through and and have it legalized at the provincial level. We've seen those those books that came to New Jersey in 2018 and across the United States uh, here in Canada as of 2022 and beyond. And what's crazy about it is that it doesn't matter where you live. I'll give you a good example, California. You look at the side of Chase Stadium, California is not legalized. What's on the side of Chase Stadium when the Warriors play every single game? Betway, boom, right in your face in a non-legalized province. I'm in. He- I'm here in British Columbia, Canada. All I see is sports betting ads, iGaming from Ontario. And apparently the mindset with a lot of these sports books are, number one, there's people watching them that are, you know, uh, you know, out in legalized states or in legalized provinces that that they're then advertising to. But then on top of that, they're trying to get your brain in the sort of right headspace for betting once the legalization does come to your to your geographical region. And inundated would be the the correct term, like you said. And I think one of the biggest reasons for that as a whole, as to why it's happening to the degree that it is, obviously it's money. Everyone knows that they're, 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 they're lining the pockets of, uh, you know, the companies and, and the, uh, advertising, you know, dollars that are going into it are huge. Um, but there really is, isn't restriction. So they really aren't getting any pushback. And that's because once this whole thing sort of took off and got legalized, everyone's kind of trying to get their hand in the cookie jar, whether it's the the government and the the legislation that's actually being put together, they want to do it in the most advantageous way so that they receive the greatest amount of tax dollars. The sports books themselves want to be as profitable as they possibly can. And in order to be profitable as a sports book, that means us, the betters, have to lose money over time and, and line their pockets. And then, of course, everything associated with, you know, everyone that wants to be a part of that, right? Like the celebrities, endorsements, all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm seeing. It's absolutely wild out there. And, uh, I actually have a vision, Shane. So I, I kind of this is kind of a, a great vision for our show, but it's also short, sort of sort of a vision for the the industry as a whole. And we're talking about being inundated with with you know ads and the money behind it. But I look at the whole thing and I go, okay, how can we reasonably and responsibly coexist uh, in a world full of betters where we can make people more informed, more educated, but also from the legislature and regulation side of things allow for player protection so that we are fairly treated and also like i said winners have the ability to coexist in this space full of you know whatever the future holds in this crazy industry you know i think you said it there uh, or you nailed the 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 word uh word of the day there uh fair right that's what it's all about fair play and i mean you know we're all big sports fans that's why that's why we we like this and we have so much fun with it and imagine a, a sports event where it's not fair where where the playing field isn't fair right i mean what fun would that be it wouldn't be enjoyable at all to watch and um you know i think you know the need for fair play across the board whether that's you know in the province of ontario or the state of new jersey or you know anywhere in the us canada and around the world fair play is should be the name of the game and so you know we're seeing all these advertisements though and a lot of them are not exactly being honest about the offers that they are providing um it it's been like that for a long way in ad for a long time in advertising where you know uh you sure you know the advertisement says one thing but then you read the fine print and it's actually something slightly different uh i think the sports books are taking that to a uh, a whole new level though um where you know you really think that hey oh they're going to give me all my money back if i place this one bet and then you find out oh wait no it doesn't quite work that way and oh you can't get all your money back at that time and oh you have to keep playing and keep betting more money in order to get some of that money you lost back and it you know they they have all of these sort of tactics um in their advertisements to kind of to kind of 
fool you. And, uh, you know, for me, one of the most notable ones is the free bet where it's, you know, oh, here's a here's a thousand dollar free bet. And, you know, you place a thousand dollars, you'll get your thousand dollars back. But no, it doesn't quite work that way. A lot of times you have to make another thousand dollar bet that they're offering you for free. So you have one shot to get your thousand dollars back. Um, you know, th- that that's one that I've seen and, and sort of encountered myself. But um, Pace, I'm sure you've seen many more. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because being a, a, a you know a professional sports better at in play live we like to call them uh, sports value analysts um <clears throat> you know i've kind of lived through the the gray area that was canada before true legalization and the reason for that is because the legislature in canada that was written before 2022 uh was it written in 1960 when the internet didn't exist and basically a lot of these sports books from the uk have been able to have free reign in canada uh, before legalization so you know for someone like myself i got to use a lot of these sports books long before they were technically you know fully legalized and uh the canadian government seemed to be okay with it as well because you know there was never any sort of uh cracking down or regulation of the books right and i think that one of the big selling features and this uh isn't just canada one of the big selling features of the regulated market was, you know, you don't have to use these shady, sketchy offshore sports books. You don't have to uh, use a bookie anymore. You don't have to worry about getting paid. These are trusted, regulated businesses that operate, you know, under these very, you know, sort of intense regulations that they must follow. And to a certain extent, the things that I just said are true. And that's one thing that, you know, big lobbyists and promoters have really fallen back on. They go every single time you read an article where, you know, they try to get both sides, you know, that, that message keeps coming back. You know, this is the safe way to play. You don't have to use bookies, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Well, the thing is, is now that we're in a regulated market and especially being, you know, the, in the position that I am, where we see people internationally betting, um, across all different States, regions, provinces, uh, you know, offshore, onshore, you know, everything, all these different sports books, a lot of the offshores treat people a lot more, quote, fairly than the actual regulated books do. And a lot of these regulated books, it goes back to the the topic of advertising where I kind of said they have free reign with their advertising. Well, when the regulators are now saying back to, you know, the, the, the players that have issues, it's actually the sports books decision on how they handle their private business and how they handle you is, is up to them. Well, then you're empowering them to continue to basically play a game that isn't fair where the referee is kind of, you know, (laughs) definitely cheering for one side. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen it in spades before the regulation. But I think the important note and distinction there is that we've now seen it in spades across multiple geographic regions uh, after regulation. And that's where, you know. I want to make the biggest impact I possibly can. And I think the people of InPlay Live want to make this the biggest imp- impact that they p- possibly can in uniting players to actually seek out fair protection. So I would actually ask the question back to you, Shane, since you're in Ontario, you're in a regulated market. Are you getting the verbiage, you know, free bet or risk free in Ontario? Yeah, you know, um, the free free bet is still out there. You know, you, you see that and you see risk free. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're betting on sports. There's always risk, right? The nothing, nothing is risk-free. And while the, the sports books may, you know, want you to think that you're going to get a free bet out of it, and you may get a free bet out of it, but that bet isn't what you think it's going to be. Um, you know, the, the practice of rolling over as well, right? Where, you know, you, you think you, you're, you're going to be able to, to do something with some money you want and then, oh, you can't cash it out or you can't get it. Right. Um, you know, that there, there's, there's that as well. Um, so yeah, so, you know, we're, we're still seeing a lot of that over here in Ontario with, uh, with free bet, uh, or risk free. And you know, that it, it is very common. Um, you're, you're seeing it on the billboards, you're seeing it on TV. So Shane, uh, I, I got to cut you off there because it is 100% illegal for sports book providers to use the term free bet or risk free in Ontario. If they are one of the regulated iGaming sports books, 
So anyone that's watching this right now that has a specific example of any verbiage associated with what we just said in Ontario or in Ohio, those are the two places that it's not allowed to be done. Uh, we will link below in this podcast where you can actually click on the link and file a complaint in Ohio or with Ontario that actually shows the direct story that you have relating to risk-free or free bet so that you can actually file that complaint properly. Um, and that goes for all sort of malpractice or you know anything that you feel as a player you weren't adequately protected for you can file complaints uh, in any of the regulated regions by by clicking that link that we'll we'll link below so i just think that that's really important um now with the risk-free bets what is really interesting is that in theory what you think that would be is okay i have one thousand dollar risk-free bet that means that i deposit a thousand dollars I mean, I assume that already, but some people might not. They might not think that that's necessary, but I deposit $1,000. That gives me my $1,000 ability to take a wager. And then if I lose, I get $1,000 back and I can just cash out. Nah, -uh, that ain't how it works. <laughs> no, and I, I've, I've been burned that way before. You know, I saw one that was 500 bucks and I thought, oh, okay, great. I'll make my $500 wager. If it loses, I'll get my $500 back. <laughs> well, no, what I got was a one-time $500 free bet, which meant that, oh, okay, I lost my, my wager the first time, and now, instead of getting my $500 back, no, I've got one bet that I can place one time for $500, and, you know, cross my fingers and hope it hits. Well, you know, long story short, it didn't hit. Goodbye, my 500 bucks. Right. But if you did win that bet, you get back, you don't get the principal back. You don't get the 500 plus the winnings, you only get the winnings back. So if you were to have wagered that at minus 200 odds in American odds or 1.5 in decimal odds, you would have gotten $250 back because that's what the winnings were on that bet, not 750 the initial plus the winnings. Exactly, right? So, you know, th these are all sort of ways that, that you know, they're, they're trying to get you and, you know, Pace, you more than I have sort of learned some of these things the hard way, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, I know that I've learned it the hard way. I know you have, and I know other members of, of Imply Live have definitely, you I, know, learned it the hard way. I try to preach learning the easy way, <laughs> but yes, we definitely have learned the hard way on a few things. Um, so, you know, one of the biggest sports books out there, I think we're going to be remiss to, to not talk about them and, and we've got to bring it up is bet three, six, five, you know, they, they've really got a, a handle on the market. They are everywhere in terms of advertising. And, um, I know Pace, you've got one in particular that really stands out to you. Yeah. One of their ads. Um, it's actually not even the ad it's, uh, it's the first five seconds of the ad. I'll just run the ad right now. If, if that's cool, Shane. Yeah, let's do it. Um, all right, replay. And my hand is everything I will ever need to bet in play. I can bet on over 780,000 different games every year. Just like that. Want to make a bet while the game's still being played? Download the app and see for yourself why Bet365 is the world's favorite sports book. So, so what is it about that that really sort of gets you going? Well, yeah, I mean, the, in my hand is everything I will ever need to bet on live sports. Well, if anyone has any success or experience betting on live sports with Bet365, I think your shelf life with them has been shorter than you would have liked. <laughs> you know, so they, they, that's false advertising in my opinion because i know of close to thousands if not tens of thousands of cases where people betting on live sports on bet 365 have been uh, politely removed and uh, no restricted and no longer able to to place wagers with them it's, and and here they are you know trying to promote and, and amplify this idea of betting during the game and and betting live and then, you know, as as soon as you do it and you do it with any kind of success, they say, no, 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 no more. 
Yeah. And, and you know, the whole, you know, the Aaron Paul thing with them, it's kind of a series of ads. I think they're great. Like they're great ads. <laughs> oh, when they come on. I get a little excited. I'm like, yeah, let's go. And that, you know, that's how they're obviously designed, right? They, they really want, want you to get excited about the games. But I think that too, I mean, there is sort of this historic, um, you know, way of betting on sports. And people used to say, if you're a professional sports better, you live in Vegas. Vegas is one of the worst places to live. As a professional sports better now, but the reason for that was because they took live weight or uh, they took pregame wagers at the kiosk, and uh, you could go up and down the strip, placing them, you know, as many times as you want at all these different uh, casinos. And you know that that ad is sort of sending the message of you know you can actually do this when the game's on, and and the series of ads then goes on obviously to tell you the different things that you can wager on. And Shane, I think you and I know firsthand the different things that they promote you betting on that are exciting, like player props or next touchdown score. Um, those are the very things that they will also flag you for with any degree of consistent success. So much so that there's certain live markets that they have that are a trap for the player that's about to wager on them. So there's certain loopholes uh, that they have in their algorithm that are actually profitable over the long term. Um, and when you expose those loopholes, rather than them fixing their algorithm and going, okay, we can fix this market so that we are not exposed to the loss that we're experiencing from sharp players on this one specific market, rather than do that and sharpen their book, they go, we see you and we just set a trap for you. You just bet on this one live market and you're done. Um, they, they, they can shut you down as quick as one single wager, which has happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. That, it's, it's unbelievable to think that, you know, off of one bet that they've promoted and, and, and put out there and told you to bet on and then you do it and it's like, uh, uh, no, sorry, you won your bet and we don't want your business anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's crazy, but you know, let let let's let's sort of move the conversation along a little bit here because, you know, at that stage though, you've signed up, right? You you you've you've created an account with the sports book. In some way, their advertising has been effective, right? You you've now gone ahead and you've said, okay, yeah, you know what? I am going to sign up with this sports book, and I'm going to go through the whole rigmarole that that's involved with that, which is you know, giving them a whole bunch of you know identification, you know, uh, uh, perhaps um, your deposit methods or, or bank account information. Fingerprints, urine sample. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, depending on the book, the list can go on and on. Yeah. But you know what? Their advertising has been so effective. They've pulled you in. You've now done all of that, with, uh, uh, you know, out of your own volition. And um, then they start getting you in another way. And they start advertising to you via email and via text message, where now it's not, you know, a, a situation where, oh, you're watching the game or, oh, you've put on the TV and you expect advertisement, but maybe you're going through your inbox, you know, to see, you know, maybe going through some work stuff or, or whatever, you know, and you've got a whole bunch of, you know, promotions and giveaways and bonuses available to you, um, you know, and, and they're really kind of getting at you right where you are. Big time. And I think to that same point, like, you know, you're waiting for an important text and in comes the text from the book. Um, and, and that's the flip side of this, right? So we kind of just looked at that from hey, you guys are falsely advertising. You limited the, you know, less than 5% of players that won a little bit of money or found a loophole on your website. How dare you, right? And I think there's validity to that argument. Well, the other side of this is you go, okay, we go back to the profitability and everyone wanting their hand in the cookie jar and, you know, inundated with ads and, you know, the government profiting now off of, of, of losing sports bettors in their respective regions. So now you look at it and you go, okay, they are making money. Bet365 is the most profitable sports book on the planet. And uh, it's no secret that their CEO is the highest paid CEO on the planet. So in the world, right? Um, so then you look at, look at it from the stance that you just brought up. You know, you have lost a little too much money. You do want to break. Um, you don't want to lose your account because, you know, you have had fun doing this at times. You don't view yourself as a problem gambler. You don't. But maybe you need a little bit of a break or, 
you know, maybe you just need a week off or you don't want to deposit today. And then you get, you know, a free $50 bet or a free $500 bet, right? And it comes through on your text message and in your email and and all these different things. And you're like, oh, well, I, I have to, like, how do I not spend this free $500? Imagine right now, Shane, it was it was Christmas and I, you know, I give you a $500 gift card to your favorite restaurant. You wouldn't go like, oh, toss it in the trash. You go, no, no. I mean, this is 500 bucks. Like I, I got to go, you know, I got, I got to go, go play with this. Right. And then obviously that's the the system that they get the losing players uh, to continue to play regardless of whether they really want to or not. And that's the other side of, you know, the, I know you're talking about the emails and the text messages, but these ads that come on definitely do paint a picture of this you know, new regulated and easy system of how simple it is to bet from being at a wedding to playing tennis to you can just pull your phone out and bet anytime you want. And, and there to us, to, to, you know, to their credit, it is that easy once you're set up and, and verified, it is that easy. Right. And, and that's the, the dangerous side of it all obviously is, you know, that person that maybe needed a bit of a break got looped back in and then perhaps it does become problematic. And, uh, yeah. And when they're advertising and where they're advertising, um, not having, you know, specific regulations or, or any pushback leading to people, you know, seeing this stuff when they're really trying to get away from it. Right. And you know, that, that idea, right. Of taking a break. Hey, you know what? I'm, I don't want to bet on sports this week. I've already lost some money. Uh, I'm not interested, you know, in, in, in losing more. So I'm going to take a break this week. That is the fundamental idea behind responsible gambling, which is the other message that you always sort of see tacked on at the very end of their advertisements, right? You, you sort of see it in the, a, a little bit of, you know, text maybe at the bottom of the screen or, you know, just a very quick, always remember to gamble responsibly, you know, something, <laughs> something like that, right? Yeah. And, you know, the person who wants to take that break is, is doing exactly that. They're saying, you know what? I've had enough. I've lost a fair amount of money here. I don't want to lose any more. I'm going to take a break. And then boom message text message email hey gamble more bet more you know it's it, it it almost you know it is very sort of counter to to that idea of responsible gambling that these sports books all claim to want to promote right so if right now we had you know uh the ceo of DraftKings or FanDuel on with us you know they would say well we have these responsible gaming tools and this is why we have them and to to your point shane they would say oh you can take a break we have a take a break option you know you're not going to get the emails all that kind of stuff you can take it for a week you can take it for a month you can take it for a year these tools exist there's more to it than that and they you know they know that to a certain extent but at the same time there, there's um a whole psychology behind all of that that you really don't want to press the button. So, you know, sports betting in general is very male dominant. The, 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 the males drive the sports betting market. Of course, there are female sports bettors out there. But, you know, there's this nature of it. You know, you go, go over to your buddy's place for Sunday football and there's a bunch of buddies there and everyone's betting in the room. You clicking that break or that pause button is like saying, I give up. I'm a loser. I'm not one of the guys. There's more to it than actually clicking it. And then there's the other part of it where you might be thinking it in your head. You go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, you haven't pressed it yet. And then you're like, hey, today's a new day and there's my free bet or my offer. Right. So, you know, yes, those tools do exist and yes, you can use them. So, and that's why they have those on the site. Like, do you have a problem gaming, gambling? Call this hotline, um, use these tools. And they are there and they do get used. Like to say that they don't get used is crazy. People do use them. I just think that, you know, in general, <laughs> there isn't, you know, they do really want those people that do click those buttons to keep obviously playing. Yeah, you know, FanDuel, I think, has one of the better advertisements, or I should say one of the more effective advertisements when it comes to responsible gambling, where, you know, the guy is bugging, you know, his his buddy about, hey, what's your secret to betting, you know, and hey, how do you do it? Is it is it home dogs? Is it the mascot? You know, and the guy's like, no, 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 I just use the responsible, uh, the responsible gaming features. You know, right. to be a successful better. I mean, you know, you know a lot of sports betters. I know a lot of sports betters. I don't know a lot of sports betters that are saying that that's their strategy. Right. No, no one. Right. And I think honestly, that's uh, 
a great episode for us to do in the future that I'm sure we'll cover, but we will definitely go into true responsible gaming tools. And when you go back to this whole thing and, and you know what the vision is and why we're doing this all, it is to educate you. And when we say that, we do really mean it. So you know, if you do tune into this show over time, I think you're going to get some really great opportunities to get some great tools. And when I have, when I refer to responsible gaming tools, I mean, actual tools that will improve your betting that we use at in play live that we'll be giving away for free. Um, and then obviously the education associated with those tools, how we use them and how you can use them in your day-to-day betting. So that like Shane said earlier, at a minimum, you can lose less or at least lose responsibly. Yeah. You know, um, Another sort of tactic here that that the sports books are using, and I mean, this is this is, you know, advertising 101, but I think perhaps they are taking it to the next level here is the celebrity endorsements and the um, integration into the sports broadcasts. So, you know, first of all, like, you know, everybody's seen these ads. We've all seen them, but we've got Wayne Gretzky. We've got. Rob Gronkowski, Austin Matthews, uh, Georges St. Pierre. And then, you know, so we've got the athletes that are all, you know, um, being paid by the sports books and they're all endorsing different sports books. And it's almost like a competition to see who can get the biggest named athlete to to endorse their sports book. But then on top of it, too, you've also got, you know, really uh, popular actors and actresses. You know, I'm thinking Jamie Foxx. We just saw uh, you run the Bet365 uh, ad with Aaron Paul uh, of Breaking Bad fame. Um, so, you know, we've got these big time celebrity endorsements, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on them specifically? And I, I guess I'm thinking more about the athletes themselves, people who are currently playing the game or, you know, in, 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 you know, in Gretzky's case played in the past, but a, a few of these guys are, are currently playing the game. What, what do you think about, you know, seeing them promoting sports betting? on such a regular basis. Yeah, I, I well, I think it's interesting. I I do know for a fact, just for with what I've seen on social media, a lot of people are really disappointed. There's a yeah. lot of people that are really disappointed. Um, people feel like their, their favorite athletes as kids have sold out. Like I know people selling Gretzky memorabilia. Um, but then the flip side is just back to the point that we've been making the whole time is everyone kind of wants their piece of the pie, right? And that's that's obviously you know these guys are getting paid big money by these sports books to to entice and and you know you can get the greatest market share that they possibly can as early as possible. Uh, there's also this this sort of notion amongst the sports books that you know they think they're you know it's like the Uber model where you try to out outbid everyone and take a loss to build up all your customers in one place. I don't think that exists in the sports betting world, but you know th- there definitely is a bit of that race to market. That's occurring, which to a certain extent is valid, but I don't think at the end there's just going to be this one book where it's like, you know, all hail DraftKings, the only sports book in the world because they undercut one over the whole market and had the best celebrity endorsers. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all just comes back to the money. Um, the kids are a big part of that, right? Like there's a lot of young kids that are big Connor McDavid fans, and now they see, I mean, remember, you know, us buying Nike as kids, right? Watching Michael Jordan, right? Um, you know, they see these guys and obviously then that turns them on to like, hey, what is Bet MGM? Uh, this ad's being played, you know, next to Barney in the morning. <laughs> like there's no, you know, not quite, but, you know, so th- those questions are being asked uh, at a young age. And then, yeah, um, the fact that they're actually playing in the league still, like McDavid Matthews and, and a few others, that's interesting. Before you before you asked that, I actually hadn't even thought of that. And because of the fact that we have some exposure um, to to a lot of different people at In Play Live, that now leads me to think about Calvin Ridley and and you know how he was betting. He made a couple parlays and then you know uh, got suspended. Um, I don't think any active NFL players are are advertising, so I don't think they can. That's an assumption I'm making. I'm not 100% sure, but obviously with the NHL, it's different. We do have NHL players that in play live. And I've been specifically told on on calls with them that they are able to wager on sports. Mm-hmm. With While they are in the NHL, they're just not allowed to wager on the NHL. So yeah. That's, that's interesting. It is. A, uh, you know, I'm glad you brought up the NHL because I think that this is, a, a, you know, one of the more interesting leagues when it comes to this topic because, you know, uh, about a decade ago, you know, there was a big time sports betting scandal. It involved Wayne Gretzky. It also involved uh, uh, Gary Bettman coming out and essentially saying that, you know, sports betting and hockey can't coexist. 
you know, that that the two, you know, aren't compatible with each other. And here we are a decade later, and it's a complete about face. Um, at that time, you had Wayne Gretzky sort of denying any involvement of him or his wife involved in this betting scandal, um, you know, saying that saying that he's never done it. He's never participated in it. Now he's one of the lead spokespeople for, for BetMGM. You know, and you mentioned people being very disappointed. I think that that was one of the moments where people were were most disappointed by seeing the great one, you know, sort of uh, saying something completely different than than what he did 10 years ago. Right. I mean, it's hard for me to feel that way myself. I just understand other people's perspectives because I look at this whole thing and I go, if there's a way for these books to provide people with true tools of value and still advertise in the in the fashion that they are maybe only you know maybe it needs to be a, an 18 plus show or maybe it has to be a sporting event only maybe it can only be after a certain time of day i don't know the answers to all that but you know more or less continue to advertise and promote the sports books but then at the same time you know there is this sort of uh, coexisting world where player protection does exist. I look at it and I go, all the power to them. Um, you know, they 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 are businesses that do need to be profitable as long as they're providing those tools and resources to people. And you know, if they continue to use celebrity endorsers, so be it. But then, of course, we individually have the ability to go, wow, I can't believe Wayne Gretz Wayne Gretzky actually did that. You know, that that to me is disappointing, or that to me is uh, contradictory to obviously the scandal that he went through earlier. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's interesting to watch, and and you can really tell relative to other ads that you watch, they're really putting a lot of heart and soul into the production of these things because they're they're entertaining. Like, there's a lot of good ones out there. <laughs> yeah, they they are entertaining. But you know, another aspect of in of taking in the game, right, is the pre-show and the oh. after show right <laughs> and what we've got and as, and as somebody who's worked in broadcasting for for quite a long time but it's really interesting for me to watch this unfold because now what we're seeing is is every sports broadcaster is now also a betting analyst right they are telling you um you know oh here's my over under prediction you know uh here's my here's my favorite parlay for this game here's my favorite player prop you know and i think you know i think so and so is going to go over so many points this game right it is it is totally integrated into the broadcast now and you know depending on what you're watching will determine what sports book you know, is, is, is essentially being advertised. All of these broadcasts now have a, an affiliate sports book, right? That they're using for their odds to, uh, to, to, to make these predictions. And I mean, you know, I, th I think most of them know the sports that they're talking about really well, but I'm not so sure they know a whole lot about sports betting. I, it, it almost leaves me speechless because I watch it every single day. And being a pro better and seeing the advice that gets given, it's just shocking. And there's something actually really interesting about sports betting and, and perspective on everything is so key. But if you take the stock market over the course of history, we have all been trained that over the course of time, the stock market goes up, right? But people make money consistently, a lot of hedge fund managers, betting against stocks. So stocks to go down or specific companies to go down. Now, the inverse of that is sports betting. In theory, every single bet that you take, if you took it a thousand times or 10,000 times, you're going to consistently go down over time, much like playing blackjack or roulette or any other, you know, sort of casino game. But I know firsthand, some people don't think it's possible. The house always blah, 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 blah. House always wins, all that stuff. But you take the inverse of that and you go, okay, you actually can make money consistently over time doing the reverse analogy that I just gave of the stock market. But then you flip to these broadcasts and the same guy that just has the job is now giving you his pick at halftime. So last year, he was the guy telling you that Patrick Mahomes has now gotten injured and thrown two touchdowns in the first half and you hope that he comes back in the second half. That's now telling you what to bet on for the rest of the half of the football game. It's mind boggling to me, absolutely mind boggling. I think it is 
one of the worst integrations in sports that you could possibly ever have. Not to mention, depending on the broadcast that you're watching, you may have two different people giving you the opposite opposite bets. And, you know, as as a viewer of that, I would feel lost and confused because you're looking at this broadcast, which in a lot of cases is the same broadcast that's delivering you news after the game, which is supposed to be like reputable information, you know, about what's going on in the world in your area. And the the guy that was just on before just told you to bet on something in an NFL game or a hockey game. Like it's wild to me. And uh, no, and they are not making people money over time. They're losing people money over time. So I think it's nuts that that's happening. Absolutely nuts. You know, I think you you really touched on something that I think is important to bring up. You feel lost and confused because you have multiple people in the same broadcast giving you conflicting information on how to bet. So not only do you feel lost and confused, but you're still being encouraged to bet. And that is a dangerous recipe for betting if you're feeling that way while trying to make a wager. It's it's almost like a, it's a perfect recipe if you're the sports book. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, uh, encourages betting, encourages betting on the site that they're promoting and um, encourages. And I mean, I think a lot of our viewers have placed bets on sports, but you know how that works is if you're a sports book, let's say that you got um, a million people to bet on the exact same thing at halftime. So every single person took the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs halftime uh, spread. So it was called on the broadcast and, and a million people bet on that. Well, the book's going to price it differently from the first better to the millionth better, right? So it isn't like a roulette wheel where it's stagnant and it stays the same regardless of how many people bet on red. In this case, let's call Kansas City Chiefs red. The more people that bet on red it's going to become worse and worse odds and the line's going to move more and more. And what the sports book's doing there is they are hedging their risk associated with that bet. But what's crazy is if they don't hedge their risk and everyone bets on the Kansas City Chiefs minus five per the broadcaster that, you know, pushed that pick, in theory, the book has a million to one, you know, for lack of keep all bet sizes constant because everyone's betting different amounts. But let's say all bet sizes are constant. The book's now got a million to one on the plus side of that bet if they if they leave it constant. They move the line so that other people get enticed by the opposite of that wager to balance their action and ensure a profit regardless of the outcome. But there is such, I guess what I'm getting at is there is such remarkable upside to getting a mass group of people to all bet on a losing bet over time uh, in the public. And that's precisely what's being pushed. You know, that's what I've Wow, that that's something that I think would be interesting to explore is whether or not the sports books are telling these broadcasters what bets to promote, right? Or are these sports broadcasters just coming up with these bets all on their own, which they may be, but right. it would be it would be a very sort of dangerous territory, I think, for the big broadcasters to allow themselves to be influenced by the advertiser in that way if if, right. if if that were to be happening um and i'm not sure that it is i'm not saying that it is right. but certainly now it, it's much more possible that it could happen than it than it could in the past right and i mean this is this is getting into like conspiracy deep stuff but yeah. you know as a professional better if that happened and you watch that line moved then you could, in theory, get theoretical value on betting against all the public and getting a much better line at the end of those million bets that that got made, right? So we're at the very beginning of this. And when you look at, let's bring back, you know, the stock market back into things. When you look at the regulation and what's going on in the stock market and what has happened from all the different, you know, the Bernie Madoff things on Netflix, tons of people have seen that, but all the different things that have happened in the stock market in a regulated you know space over the years and and obviously what's gone on there and the corruption and all that kind of stuff we don't have that in the sports betting world but the parallels are there there is an element to sports betting that is a lot like day trading when you are live and betting on sports which is obviously what is being promoted all these books are talking about live betting live betting live betting so who knows what that's to bring 
um, in the future from a regulation standpoint and obviously from the standpoint of, of you know, money made versus lost. It'll, it'll be interesting. I'm here for the ride. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm along, you know, with it. And um, we hope you, the audience, the viewers, the listeners will also be along for our ride as we kind of dissect these tactics, these strategies that the sports books are uh, deploying to try to take your money. They want all our money. They want all the money. And so, you know, we hope that you guys will be along with us as we sort of try to help you navigate these waters, waters while still having fun and you know, enjoying the games and, and yeah, making a few wagers on the side. And and hopefully, you know, you'll you'll win more wagers than you lose over time. That that's the that's the goal. So, you know, we've covered a lot of ground here uh today, Pace, on the um on the advertising front. You know, we talked about, you know, the all of the um endorsements, the celebrity endorsements, how they're getting you on your phone and in your emails and how they're rarely, you know, everywhere you go, whether it's the TV, the internet, out in the public on billboards and, you know, subways and, and buses and everywhere you go. So it, it, I guess, you know, it's something that's here to stay. The advertisements aren't going away. But the important thing is, is that you, the audience, the listeners, all of us know when they're not being totally truthful. Well said, buddy. Well said. Oh. Um, you know, with that, uh, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're probably here to, to wrap up this, uh, this episode. So, uh, you know, um, Andrew Pace, founder of InPlay Live. Thank you so much for, for, for being a part of this. I, I really enjoyed the conversation. And you, the audience, um, if you enjoyed this conversation, please like, subscribe, download. We're on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. You can find us everywhere that you get your podcasts. So, uh, you know, please, please give us a little bit of love. And if you're interested in In Play Live and you want to become a, a better, better and sort of learn you know, more tips, strategies, tactics for improving your sports betting, then then head to InPlay Live and we have a promo code promo code for you behind the lines. So please, if you're if you're interested and that's something you want to do, use that promo code behind the lines at InPlay Live. Pace, anything you want to add before we sign off here? We have a ton of fun at InPlay Live. We're a community of over, you know, a thousand sports bettors that uh, are working against the books actively, and we are the ones fighting for the player, both inside the community and outside the community. Inside the community, obviously, we're helping people to succeed over time. We have uh, eclipsed over 10 millionaires that were from nothing. So from sports betting and well into the hundreds of people that have eclipsed uh, the six-figure profit mark. Uh, profit margin. So yeah, use that promo code behind the lines and check us out. That's going to be the best pricing that you can get uh, for all our, all of our subscriptions. And I'm super pumped, Shane. I'm super excited that uh, you, you wanted to do this with me and the, the future is bright, my friend. So until next time. All right. Stay sharp.